This is Craig Shacklett, CEO of URComp. I'm so pumped today because we have a special guest. Actually, the timing is perfect because we're about a day removed from passing a new tax bill. So I am here with an expert on gambling taxes and most importantly, how to make sure you pay as little of them as possible within the, uh, the bounds of the law. So let me introduce uh, Ray Conler. He's the founder of Conler and Associate CPA. They are the experts in casino law or casino uh, accounting and um, and taxes. So Ray, thank you so much for being here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your firm. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Yeah, I'm the owner of Collin Associate CPAs. We've been, I've been practicing in New Jersey for over 30 years in Vegas. We've been here for, uh, I think this is our 10th or 11th year. Um, our firm is one of the experts, national experts in taxation of poker players. Uh, we also take care of other gamblers, slot players, and things like that. Uh, it's an interesting niche. Uh, we do a lot of work with the WSOP brand. We go to the Rio for six weeks in the summer. Uh, we sit there every day and answer questions and help people out. We go to their circuit events now. We've been to Oklahoma, Indiana, um, North Carolina. So we go and we sit there and we educate people. So, you know, the firm is, uh, we also do a lot of casino work. We audit casinos here. So we're pretty entrenched in the market here. And it's an interesting niche because there's a lot of significant tax issues that people don't know what to do with them. Oh, that's fascinating. How did you kind of get into that niche? Are you a poker player yourself? Or um, I am a I am a aspiring poker uh, player. Um, I play a lot in a lot of events, which seems to add to our marketability because they say, you know, he, he actually, you know, I know the game, I know what the guys go through, um, so it kind of helps a little bit. But being in the Vegas market, we started out just having gamblers we have a lot of slot players and sports betters and then we got entrenched with the wsop brand and started going down there um probably five six years ago to the rio and then from there it just expanded because a lot of people who make a lot of money that you know if they win a, a bracelet event or whatever they're making significant money and most cpas don't know how to handle it so it worked out well being in vegas and um you know as i said we help a lot of players out well, that's fascinating. And so yeah, it's a cool niche. most of, yeah, it's a great niche. I mean, I'm, I love the niche, obviously. Uh, so, you know, maybe at a high level, why don't we start And most of our audience would be watching this. It wouldn't so much, I mean, there's probably poker players, but I think yeah. a lot of uh, the people that will watch this from UR Comp are going to be interested in, in slots, maybe some table, um, you know, sure. some table games, but yeah, why don't you um, give us a high level overview of, so, what do gamblers need to know about taxes? Okay, so I mean, the, the basically way to tell our players, that, you know, slot players or table games or sports betters or, you know, poker players, what do you qualify under? Because you can qualify as a professional or you can qualify as an amateur. Um, most people who play slots or table games that we come in, they qualify as an amateur or they think they are, okay? But if that is your main job, you could actually qualify as a professional. Let me tell you the differences. As an amateur, you can only write off your losses against your winnings. So if you win 100,000 in W2Gs, you can write off 100,000 in W2Gs against it and pay zero tax, okay? A professional, and professional, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, can deduct other expenses. So if they have 100,000 in winnings and 100,000 in losses, a professional can go below the line and write off travel, meals, entertainment, uh, home office, cell phones, things like that. So you actually show a loss on your return on a Schedule C and deduct it against your other income if you're, quote, a professional. What qualifies you as a professional is not how much money you make, but if you promote a substantial amount of time to that business. So, for example, somebody who sits there and plays slots five, six hours a day and has no other job, in theory, they're a professional. So, and it comes, it actually is interesting because, for example, uh, we get this all the time. Somebody wins a slot jackpot and they win, say they win $50,000, okay? And they come up and they say, okay, I got 50000 in losses. I play every day. I got, you know, this, the, the reports from the casino that says I lost, okay? If they're collecting Social Security tax, if they're collecting Social Security, the income goes on page one of the return. If the expenses go on page two as an itemized deduction. That's how it works on the return, right? Your Social Security, if they're collecting Social Security, the Social Security is taxable because they go off what's on page one of the return and not on page two. 
Huh. So I get this all the time. Well, I didn't make any money, but you got to pay tax on your Social Security if your income is over a certain level, which is like 40000 jointly. Okay? How do you get around that is that person files as a professional because then that would go on Schedule C. It'll show 15 income, 15 expenses, net is zero. That goes to page one of the return, and your Social Security won't be taxable. Wow. So it's actually, you know, we get this, we get this, especially in Vegas, a lot that, you know, older men, older women, whatever, come in and go, you know, my account made my Social Security taxable. Yeah, because you won a big one. So this yep. just file as a pro, and, you know, yeah, we, we, so when you look at returns, we actually have to sit down and talk to people to figure which is the right way to do it pro and amateur. You're not bound by law to do either or. You can pick, pick and choose. Well, that's so fascinating. It, it, and oh sorry i and i think this question will like kind of may lead into what you're going to say i apologize Did, so would anybody any high level slot player that's retired and doesn't have a significant other source of income besides maybe social security mm -hmm. I mean, is there is there maybe a threshold where it really would make sense to go professional um probably to the point when your social security is taxable which could be anything over 40 grand you know, and there's a lot of different nuances in the law because if you look at the IRS law, it basically says that they have, okay, you, the 100% IRS rules, you can't take your winnings for the year. So if you win 100000 in the gross W2Gs or hundred grand, the IRS actually doesn't like that. They, they basically say that every time you go in the casino, it's a session. Or every time you're at a machine, it's a session. So in theory... If you're going all year and you go 365 days a year, your gross won't be the hundred. Your gross could be in the millions because every time you're at that machine, it's a session. Do people keep track of that? No. But if you look at the Irish rule, that's the way to do it. We always do it on the net, the net winnings for the year of W2Gs or somebody coming to me and say, hey, I'm a sports better and I won 100000 They're not going by their gross. Okay. So in, what I meant where I'm going with this is that when you anything makes your social security taxable, you might want to consider doing a pro. The downside, the only downside of being a pro is that when you go in, it's a Schedule C, okay? You have a higher chance of audit on a Schedule C than if you just take gambling losses. In my career, I haven't seen, I haven't, I can't remember the last time I've ever seen gambling losses audited. And you're talking about from an amateur or from a? From an, like, from an amateur standpoint. And I'm talking a Schedule C could in increase your chance of being audited, but your chance of being audited if your income is under 100 grand is probably less than a half a percent. And if you do a Schedule C, it might go to 2%. There's still 98% chance on the worst case you would get audited. And, that, and if you get audited, you know, my, you know, I teach all my clients what records to keep. And, you know, the casino does a good job if they're using a loyalty card. And it gives them a report at the end of the year. So it, it can easily be done. But you can also go back and do log books and things like that. And what are some of the advantages of a logbook versus what I know, like you alluded to, most people just kind of rely on the win-loss statement at the end of the year? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the logbook, for example, if you have, say you won a $100,000 jackpot or something, and your one-loss statement at the end of the year shows you lost only fifty grand. okay? If you went, you had logbooks from other casinos that you don't use the loyalty card, you know, you can go back and do a logbook of all the other expenses you have. It could be for like lottery and table games and anything like that. So poker players, when they do from the WSOP, they will add all their gambling down there because they'll win and they'll go to the baccarat table or blackjack table, and you can add all those losses. And if you have a, you know, and if you have a good logbook, that's we kind of tell our clients, we teach our clients to do in audit. They do very well. I mean, I went. Yeah, you know, we had a client who got audited by the IRS and. He didn't have the greatest logbook. So we went, you can actually go back and recreate it. So we recreated the logbook and the agent was like, I don't even know why you're here. It's like a perfect logbook. So <laughs> that's interesting. And so just maybe to give us kind of a, a picture, I mean, for that person that got audited, mm -hmm. what were his winnings or losses or why, what do you think caused him to get flagged? It, I, 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 it was a, it was a general audit. It wasn't specifically for that i didn't do the return it was done by somebody else and it was he had a couple side businesses that had a lot of deductions that didn't make any sense so when the agents pull it they look at everything on the return and then the gambling one came up 
So that was his problem. He didn't he didn't go with you for the whole thing. Well, that's right. But that's going to happen. There's, there's a lot of people. <laughs> but I mean, my point is that when he came to me, I said, no, I, let's see your logbook. And it was OK, but it didn't have, you know, dates and times and it should have. But we went back and recreated and it was OK. Got it. And this, you know, anybody that's probably gotten this far in the interview probably already knows the answer to this. But maybe for a beginner, can you kind of tell us what triggers, um, you know, like a hand pay or what? What is that amount or the different levels that will cause a uh, player to have to report winnings and kind of get well, on the once you, once you win, yeah, once you win over 1200 bucks in a slot machine, you're going to get a W2G. The WTG form, they get a pick copy of it and it's sent to the IRS. So we actually, and the IRS does match them up to your tax return. So if you don't file on your tax return, in most cases, unless the IRS screws it up, you'll get a notice. We've got a couple this year. My clients didn't give me every one. And they said they get a notice that says you forgot the one at the palms or whatever, and then you got to go back and amend the return. So it's fi anything over five thousand for poker and anything over twelve hundred for slots. Nothing for table games or anything like that. They were going to change the rule to six hundred for slots. That would have been a nightmare. So the <laughs> were like, we're not doing that. So, it, but it's still at twelve hundred. You would have had to double your team, huh? Uh, something like that. Yes. <laughs> so. Now I heard would have got one. I mean, it may would have tripled what the casino gives out in a day, but their record keeping would have been incredible, incredible because they got to send all those to the IRS, oh, and they right. need more people to give out more W two Gs, and you know that that didn't go over too well. And so, is there any? I remember maybe it was I, I, I may be mistaken. Is there anything, any like multiplier bonuses or anything that? you could hit on table games that would trigger something or is pretty much never on blackjack or craps or anything you'll ever I've never seen one issue for table games. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. And then what about playing internationally? If somebody's in the Caribbean or on a cruise or something and they hit a jackpot, what do they need to know? Uh, they're going to get it. Um, depending on the cruise line, they should, I've seen the cruise lines actually give up W two G's with the same guidelines. And you're responsible as a U.S. citizen to pay your tax on your worldwide income. So if you get, I don't, you know, I don't know if they, you know, how far the, the boat does to send them into the IRS, but there are, I would say probably 50, 50 that they're issuing W2Gs okay. depending on the line. And, and like you just said, if, if the cruise ship is giving it to the IRS then the IRS is definitely going to. Correct. No. They're logging it. Yeah. They're logging it and they'll send you a notice if you didn't include it. <clears throat> now, most people are pretty, most people, most of my clients, we, they're pretty. They keep a folder of all of them. So, you know, and then most of the, most of the win loss statements now at the end of the year are actually showing W two G winnings, mm -hmm. like this coin in and coin out and all that kind of stuff. It's actually showing W two G winnings, so they can use that as a as a guide. Gotcha. And are you allowed as as the CPA of a client? Are you allowed to request anything, any documentation on their behalf? Because obviously, a lot of High-end players may travel to different casinos and track them down. Yeah, yeah as tables. a CPA, I cannot. You cannot? Okay. I can, I can. well, in a way, I, I can't talk to the casinos, but if the client gives me a power of attorney with the IRS, I can pull up the trans, that person's transcript to see what was filed on their behalf. So in a way, I can. Like okay. you, say, you say, right, you know, I, I played 300, you know, I don't keep all the receipts. I don't know. Um, so you'd give me power of attorney, and then I can go to the IRS website and pull down a transcript of every W two that they have for you. Gotcha. And what are what's the most combined W T W two G winnings you've seen with one of your clients? Now, and I I guess leave out the poker, uh, the poker players like Adam. I had why well, one woman had. She came in with a pile. I think they had up to two point eight million. Whoa. She had a stack of them. But she was actually paying people to sit at the machines and play with her to play for her. Really? Yes. More points. Oh wow! Exactly. So she was uh, she was all about the comps. Exactly. Right. So with that, I've seen people do that. Um, we actually had yes, we had it. We had I got a referral as a client who won Wheel of Fortune for ten million dollars. Wow. Yes. Is that the is that the biggest single jackpot you've seen? Yes. And that was an interesting one because he was a California resident and he wanted here, but he really wasn't a California resident. So Cal California gave him a hard time. They wanted their taxation on it. 
think got, that was a real long time ago. I think that got settled, but yeah, they wanted their money. And how would California find out about it? just from the IRS filings or on yes. the news or? Yes. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. now actually they got it because his, when he gave the license, when he got the money, he gave him the California license. So had a California address on it, which and, was a mistake because he really had a Nevada license and he would have saved the tax. <laughs> and so what would you say, I guess, percentage wise would be your breakdown, but just in the like casino games, I guess mm-hmm. we'll, for now we'll leave out poker and sports betting, you know, it's probably the lion's share, but between like video poker slots and just standard table games, how would you say that um, it breaks up? In terms of the the people winning or the W2Gs they're issued? I guess from your number of clients. Um, well, I would say I would say 70, 80% are from video slots, from video poker. Video poker. Mm-hmm. And what about international clients? Is there anybody watching that maybe hit a jackpot here, but they live in the UK? Oh, that's, or that's an interesting one because <laughs> when we went down to the World Series the first year, the one thing we didn't take into account were the foreign people, okay? So I don't know if you how that works. Um, say somebody from Brazil wins a bracelet event, okay? Wins half a million dollars. The same could be a slot or whatever. Wins a half a million dollars. There are countries that have treaties with the U.S. There's about 30, 35 or something like that, okay? So for example, England, Ireland, they have treaties with the U.S. So any gambling winnings by those people in our country, they don't have to pay tax on it here, Okay. Brazil, the big one is Canada, because we get a kind of a lot of people from Canada who play slots. And you have to, at the time of winning slots or poker, 30% comes right off the top. Okay. Hmm. So the guy from Canada comes, wins a slot thing, wins five grand, he's only gonna get thirty five hundred. They're gonna take fifteen hundred out. Now, he can file then for a refund, but it's a complicated process, but we do, we do a lot of those. You have to file for an ITIN number, like which is similar to our social security numbers. But then on the you would file 1040 NR return. You would show five thousand in winnings, five thousand in losses, zero tax. You withheld fifteen hundred. You can apply for a refund. Gotcha. Well, we get this all the time at the World Series of Poker because a lot of Brazilian guys win a lot of tournaments lately, and if they're winning five six hundred thousand, they're taking one hundred fifty hundred eighty out. So they can take their losses against their winnings, so they're not going to get it all back because, you know, they're not spending 500000 or 600000 to make that money, but they're getting a substantial refund because the IRS, when the taxes is taken out, they don't take into account how much you paid in total for your, all your buy-ins. But that guy from Brazil can write off his travel and his meals and all that kind of stuff too. Now, I'll have to, I'll have to take your business cards down to Brazil. I'm leaving tomorrow. My yes. father-in-law is mm-hmm. a poker fanatic okay so, yeah yes, we take care um, of that we take care of a lot of we had the final table at the world series of poker main event i think the final 14 there were three peoples from foreign countries and we got out of the latest 10 or 12 and we have all three wow and they got big money taken out and they're going to apply for a refund like the first day of january <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're brushing up on your portuguese uh very interesting because i have to yeah i have to have somebody in my office who speaks it because it's getting hard, you know. I'm like, I don't speak it, but we have the computer down there. We're doing the translation, you know, the Google back and forth. Um, or we'll have to find somebody, but yeah, but they're all great guys, so you know, we, we take care of them. But you know, if you're a U.S. person and you go down to Brazil, so you go down to Brazil and win, um, it all depends what country if they're going to take their tax out, but um, probably in Brazil, I don't think they do. But you're required to report on your return, and then if you happen to pay Brazilian tax, you would get a credit. For what you paid U.S. You don't pay double taxation. It's just how it's reported. But as a U.S. citizen, you're required to report income worldwide, no matter where you earn it. Well, I guess thankfully I always lose, so it makes my taxes simpler. But um, <laughs> but the so, time you do, there you're going to need me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, um, now I, uh, I brought up at the very beginning. We, you know, obviously there's a big tax reform. And I've read it's the biggest in 30 years. Yeah, there's We're, some issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe you could touch on that. What changed in the, for gamblers? Well, in, in theory, and, you know, Zach from my office is up on that, there might be, there might, we haven't seen the final, final bill, but I, there was some talk that um, the professionals were going to have, were going to have an issue taking all the expenses as a, as a professional. 
I don't know how that got finally written, but we're still trying to get the final draft, but they were going to have an issue with that. But, but I, I, I have serious, I have serious still issues with the IRS, the way they classify pros and amateurs, because there was a famous case called Mayo case, M-A-Y-O, where he sued the IRS as a professional, okay? And he showed 100,000 in winnings, and he had 140,000 just arguments, like maybe it was 120, something like that. But he showed more losses than than winnings, okay? And he's a poker player? Yeah. So he had 100,000 in winnings, 120,000 120, in losses. He showed a loss of 20,000, and then he showed about 10 or 12,000 in travel. So he showed like a $30,000 loss, something like that. Gets audited, the IRS says, well, no. You can only take your losses to the extent of your winnings, okay? So if you made 100, you can't take the 120, you can only take 100 to net it to zero. And then below the line, you can take right off to 12,000. I have a serious issue with that because, it, you know, it's, you know, your clients too, you know, one year is you have great years and one next year you have a bad year. I mean, just the nature of, especially poker, it's definitely. So the main event winner, the World Series of Poker wins $8 million and loses the next year three million playing can't write off his three million in losses i don't get that because the mayo case if you read it basically says that they why he can write off his expenses is because he's a business well why mm -hmm. is a poker player different than an ice cream store who buys twenty thousand of ice cream and it all melts before they sell it they can write off the twenty thousand dollar loss why can't this guy so i'm trying to i want to fight it it's going to be I have a, a prominent tax lawyer who will do the same. It might be something we want to get into. It doesn't make any sense. Why is a gambler treating anybody than any different than anybody else? I think it's the First nature point. of gambling per se, but it doesn't make sense. You're not going to have winning years every year, so why can't you take your losses? No, it makes total sense. Yeah. Um, you know what we didn't touch on, which is obviously – you know, you are comp, our business is area of expertise, but how does the IRS look at comps, free play, promo chips, even like a, a super high end where there's a discount on loss? Um, yeah, I mean, I, in theory, I've never seen, never seen a 1099 or anything issued with that. We've seen 1099 issued for when they win prizes. Like if there's a drawing, you know, if a drawing, you know, hit the wheel for a thousand dollars, they'll get a W2G for that. Actually, they'll get 1099 called other income hmm. but in comps and stuff it's not ever i've ever seen taxed yeah i've seen that too when they hit the jackpot and they win the mercedes or something off the you're going to get a thing called other income okay which which you know and we have an issue with that too because say you win that because you're gambling well, you should be a w2g so you could take your losses against it right it's a, it's a, you know it's an interesting field because I don't think the IRS has their arms around it. You know it's going to be one of those things where you know you know how come all these you know there's there's data on there on Henry and Mob and things like that and you know does the IRS go there and check what the winnings are? No, I mean I would don't think they do. But if you know things are out there to get it, but they don't seem to like, regulate as much as I think. Especially like comp, to me, comps, you know, you get comps for playing at the casino, you're really getting free meals. Is that theoretically taxable? I mean, you know, there's nothing written that it is. That's why they don't give out anything for it. Have you ever seen that? A 1099 issue for comps? Nope. No. Nope. Right. Because we, you know, we, as I said, we audit many casinos here in Las Vegas and they don't keep track of what they're giving out in comps. That would be a record keeping nightmare. Yeah. Um, I guess last question kind of on my end, there may, we, there may be something we left out we should cover, but so like, let's say there is a, somebody watching that did do 40, 50,000 or more in W2Gs mm -hmm. and they want to, they just want to offload it. Right? I don't want to deal with this. What's kind of the onboarding process? What do you ask clients that come to you uh, to have prepared? Like maybe walk us through that. Well, you know, it's it's different in this age of the internet and all that kind of stuff. I like to see all my clients. Um, so if we met them, we would sit down, they would give me all their W2Gs, and then we would go through all the expenses. We talk about a pro versus amateur, obviously, um, and we talk about what their expenses are against it. Um, as I, If we do everything through the internet and on PDF, I just do the same thing. 
here's your losses you can take, here's the expenses you can take. And I, you know, Craig, we'll do, we'll do thousands of returns this year. I try to talk to every one of my clients, especially gamblers, to say, hey, you know, here's, here's, because we, you know, we get five to 10, five to 20 emails a week of new clients. And we specifically, I'd like to talk to them and ask them, you know, I look, I look at prior returns. I never charge for that. Um, but, you know, we try to make them compliant. So, you know, I, the, the people that I really don't like to deal with, the people don't want to pay any tax. I mean, in terms of they want a million dollars. I want just say I lost a million dollars. Okay. I could, you know, you sign in the return. I could do that. But my issue is higher chance of getting audited. And it's hard to come up with a million dollars in losses. Right. So, you, know, you pay them some money, you take some reasonable, you know, you pay them a couple of dollars and they leave you alone. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep them compliant. But I will do, I will tell you that I've done returns for people who have been following 10, 15 years that want significant amounts. And then they call and they go, well, I want to make a payment plan now with the IRS. And it's like, I can't help you now. You know, <laughs> file your taxes every year, show some, you know, show whatever you have to show. Try to get it what you can down, as we talked about, with your expenses, but file timely, and you're, you're never, probably never going to get audited. Gotcha. And you can help. You said you have offices in Atlantic City and Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we have an office in Atlantic City. We have one here in Vegas. But I think last year I did I did every every state's tax returns. Wow. That people PDF me stuff and scan me stuff or whatever or say, hey, I don't keep good records. Can you go see what's on, w, on the IRS website and do the returns? So we can handle everybody in every state. What's the uh, what's the most painful state tax re return to fill out? Um, California. <laughs> Thought you'd say that. California is the worst. I mean, they just the return is okay. It's just they they try to get every dollar. No, but then there's also you don't want to go back to that pro versus amateur thing. There's also some issues in that because, for example, there's some states that don't allow gambling losses. As a professional, as an amateur, uh, Massachusetts. There's a couple other ones. There's like ten or so. So if you win in your Massachusetts resident, you will pay tax on your gross winnings, state tax. No losses allowed, and no way around it. No. Yes, there is. File Schedule C as a pro, and then it you can take your loss on Schedule C as an expense of doing business, and then you get around that. Wow. So we have a lot of people from other states who say, hey, right away, I, my account did the return and I got to, you know, I have all the state tax. Well, yeah, because there's different ways around it. Because if you classify yourself as a business, you're entitled to take your business expenses, which would include cost of buy-ins and all that kind of stuff, in my opinion. Well, this, I mean, that's fascinating. I'd never even thought about turning professional, but it makes sense. I mean, there's a lot of people yeah, that this, you know, the down the downside of the downside is the one downside of being a professional is if you have significant income because uh, if you win say you win 500,000 and you follow as a pro and you have expenses of 100 200 grand you'll pay regular tax on 300 300,000 but also social security tax because it's a business so you're going to pay social security tax on the profit where the amateur doesn't pay social security tax so that's why we have to do the returns basically both ways. The way, you know, what's the right way to do it? And can you switch off between amateur and professional? Yeah, some years you could be playing less. Yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, this has been fascinating. It's, Is there anything cool, else? It's that... a cool niche, yes. It is, and it changes, the landscape changes every day. Like these new tax changes might change a little bit. So we're monitoring and we'll keep up on it. Was there anything interesting or important that maybe we we didn't touch on um well we talked about pro amateur I, you know as i said i i think the most important thing is people have and it's a pain in the neck but they have to keep good records okay um you know if you're gonna follow as a pro keep all your records use a charge card to charge all your poker related expenses things like that because i get people who give me w2gs and have no like for example poker players they have a lot of they don't make most of their money because they're selling off their action so, you know, a $10,000 main event seat, they might sell, you know, 50% of it for half the buy-in, okay? Mm. So when they win, they have to give 1099s to the people who won their met. But they had – most players don't track who they bought into. 
Mm. Like, oh, I think I bought into John and I think I bought into Michael and all that kind of stuff. And they don't remember. So they really got to keep good records. Because, for example, if you win, you win the main event for $8 million and you only have 30% of your action, you're going to get a W2G for $8 million. But you got to, you know, you can show as the cost of going out to other players to 70%. You can deduct that, but you got to have 1099s. So you got to send, you got their name, address, social security number. And most people don't keep that kind of stuff. Which is an issue. So now, you see that sometimes with slot players. What you know, you see it on YouTube um, where people will do a group slot poll where they'll all pitch in a hundred bucks and they'll exactly. go high so limit. In theory, I mean, in theory, if you're not my my the way I understand the rule is that if you're not winning it, you're only winning twenty percent of it. Then you show you show the, and it comes in your social security number. You show the gross and then ten ninety nine out the income to the other people. Because you know, yeah, I mean, why are you going to pay tax on what you didn't get? Gotcha. So the best, so for the tax uh, deduction, the best way to do something like that, if you guys do get lucky and hit a big jackpot, is mm -hmm. the cleanest way. Or I mean, it's not clean, but whatever. One way is to do ten ninety nine for everyone that got a disbursement from that big jackpot. Correct. So that's that. But that's record keeping. So if you get into a group and there's a chance you could win, make sure you have all their addresses and social security numbers, just in case. Or you don't have to get it at the time, but before you give them the money, you should ask for that. Because if you get audited, the IRS won't allow it if you don't have it. All right. And then I guess last question on, on good record keeping. You mentioned uh, keeping a journal or a log. Mm -hmm. Any, um, yeah, we have, you know, we just have, you know, we, people, clients can always email me. We have like logs that we make that they can email me and you get a copy of it. Um, you know, just at the end of the month, you know, I have a lot of people do it daily. You know, it says I showed up at the Rio at 1110 and I played, you know, 1200 slots and I lost it all and they'll keep records like that. Most people don't. There are apps for it, but nothing I really would recommend. So most people at the end of the week, we, t we in Excel spreadsheet, they'll keep. But I've seen everything. I've seen little notebooks and pencil and all that, which is fine. It's better than just sitting at the end of the year and guessing. Right. You know, but, you know, Craig, I mean, most of the people that we have as gamblers, not you know, not many people because of the complexity of the show winnings. You know, I, I have minimal that show. You know that that they show. They say I didn't make anything. Net net, I lost. So okay, you're finding the return, but you know, you got to have record keeping in case you get audited. And you can always go back and recreate it, so people can say I don't have, I don't keep my log books now. The IRS does, says you can go back and recreate it. Like you could say, oh, I think I went at the Rio such and such a day, and you put it in your log book. Now the IRS could say, "Well, let's show me an ATM withdrawal, or show me something at the casino to have the money." But that won't, you know, that won't fly. They could ask for it, but you could have money you took out of your safe deposit box or whatever. So interesting. Well, I man, I learned Ray. I learned way more than I expected I you. you going in. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has been fascinating talking. Yeah, to every you. day, it's, every day here in Vegas, uh, it's we get calls like that, and it. It's, you know, it's, we actually get a lot of people that come to World Series to our booth and say, my account has no clue. Do you mind answering the questions so he can do it? I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, if you can, if I can help you guys, it's fine. You want me to review the returns? I'm okay with it. But there's a lot of interesting things that a lot of CPAs don't know. Well, Ray, thank you so much. My uh, pleasure. I know I learned a ton. I know anybody that's watching this is going to learn a ton. We'll put your website in the in the uh, description but Great. why don't you say it out loud real quick okay so um our, my website is conler like my last name k-o-n-d-l-e-r cpa.com um and we're also uh pokers if you type in pokercpa.com it will go to our website so that's probably easier to remember pokercpa.com pokercpa.com that is awesome so yes if you we have a contact form that they can fill out if they have any questions we never we never charge for calls or emails or questions so you can easily ask me a question through our website we'd be glad to answer it that's awesome and i can speak firsthand it, it, that ray and his team are super responsive i you know one of our clients asked me something about about taxes and i just googled you know tax expert or casino tax expert in you guys were, were mm -hmm. right up. I think you were the number one yep. result. So anyway, and then I put in the contact form and I got a response 
next day. So they yeah, are. No, I, my, yeah, I'm the owner of the firm. I have a staff I watch out for, but the most important thing is to get back to clients. I do a lot of CPAs, especially in this town, are very non-responsive. And that, that, that I, was, I don't get that at all. We're here to help. We're here to, to do what we can for our clients. So I try to get back to them like right away as much as possible. Well, I think you and I share that philosophy on business. And uh, Great. Well, I appreciate it, Ray. And yeah, That's so obviously, yeah, if, if anybody out there watching uh, needs help with taxes, uh, definitely reach out to Ray and his team. And if you're a potential client of Ray, then you're probably playing at the level where you are comp could help you get comped on a different cruise or get an amazing comp offer at a new casino. So um, anyway, this has been fascinating. Ray, thank you again so much. My pleasure. Uh, it, pokercpa.com or in the uh, description, we will put the link as well. So thank Great. you again. My pleasure is mine.